Welcome, this is Greybeard for the Sylvan Reflections channel. If you watched any of my videos, you probably know that I am on a quest to hike all the trails in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and become a member of the 900 Miler Club, which celebrates those who have achieved this goal. So, in mid-January, I drove the three-plus hours to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. On this occasion, I headed to Cherokee Orchard Road on the outskirts of Gatlinburg, Tennessee, to reach the Twin Creeks Trailhead. The plan was to park at the Twin Creeks Trailhead, hike the 1.9 miles south on Twin Creeks Trail, do the 0.7 miles of Bud Ogle Place Nature Trail, followed by the 0.9 miles on Cherokee Orchard Road and 0.2 mile snippet of Roaring Forks Nature Trail before traveling 2.5 miles on Baskins Creek Trail, including the little spurs Baskins Creek Falls. From there, I would hike 2.7 miles before stopping to catch a 0.4 mile section of the Big Deadly Horse concession trail. I would continue to 1.7 miles on Grapeyard Ridge to reach the Engine Creek campsite. On day two, I would continue the 3.2 miles east to the Greenbrier Road where I would be picked up and taken back to my car at the Twin Creeks Trailhead. Well, this is another beautiful Sabbath morning. We are headed to the Smokies once again. This time we're going to be starting off in the Twin Creeks area and it's so pretty. I have to leave so early in the morning around 4ish to get over here anywhere close to sunrise, but it's worth it. It's worth it to watch the dawn break over the mountains. It is just just gorgeous. Ah, we've just left the 40 and are getting on the Foothills Parkway, getting on the 321, heading towards Gatlinburg. Greybeard here for Sylvan Reflections. Want to thank you for joining me. Unfortunately, the last oh half mile getting to the trailhead for Twin Creeks to start is closed the road there because of tree falls and stuff the road closure meant that I was unable to enter the National Park with my car where my annual Smokies parking permit would allow me to park my car overnight I called the Gatlinburg Police Department which I've called before about parking questions and once again, they were extremely understanding and helpful. And I was allowed to park overnight at the city's Minot Park. And there are some high wind advisories for today, but that's going to go away throughout the day. So we're just going to head on down until we get to the Twin Creeks Trailhead. The one thing that I did forget are gloves. And as it's getting down to 32 tonight, should have brought those, but I have used, I'm using my extra pair of hiking socks. Works all right. Always something, right? Great Smoky Mountains National Park, Cherokee Orchard Road. So we are just about to our trailhead. So Twin, Creek, Twin Creeks Trail, we'll head on down to the Noah Ogle Nature Trail, do that little loop. Unfortunately, got my traditional late start, so it'll be at least probably an hour to two hours of night hike. I have my headlamp, I have an additional flashlight, and two or three changes of battery, so that shouldn't be a problem. Man, it's weird operating the camera with socks on your hands. We'll continue on. So 
Okay, we have arrived at the nature trail. This is the Noah Bud Ogle Farm. Sorry, I know it's a little, it's backlit, so it's hard to see. So it's time to go take a look here. Incidentally, it's warmed up enough that I can take off the makeshift gloves. Got a, they have a little self-guided tour here. Okay, you can see the Bud Oglethorpe place, the cabin here. This is rather nice one. Multiple rooms. Looks like an upper story. I do not wish to go in since they had it roped off on the other side. I'm assuming this side they mean to be roped off too. But so I'm not I won't go in, but as you can see that is quite roomy. Nice fireplace. Yeah, see there's the leftover, so I won't go in. Okay, time to go on. And of course, what cabin is complete without a barn? No tape on this one, so we can go in, take a look. Oh, you see the stalls. Typical, but very, actually, this is really nice. Uh, you can see up here, they have some nice storage over top of the stalls. Beautiful. Okay, I'm back on the road now, splitting left, heading out to the Baskins Creek trailhead. And I'm just looking here at the, the hills as I'm going by. And you can see the the mature trees and then the crop of the not so mature trees underneath being in winter it makes it so obvious the difference between the two so now we are coming to we're going to cross over the roaring fork motor nature trail and hit the Baskins Creek Trail and we will head this direction Roaring Fork Road and hit that again in just a little bit and we'll cross over that you will not believe the amount of blowdowns and material all over everywhere the roads and everything like you saw so I guess it's no wonder that they closed off the Cherokee Orchard Road Wow, look at all the deadfall that we've got going on here. Feels to me like anyway that when something like this happens, it effectively adds triple the distance. Maybe quadruple the distance for those areas that you're having to negotiate hike up and around. Whew, looks like they're going around up here. Let's see, we might be able to just go over here. Well, that was a fun little creek to cross. Looks really easy, except that where you're stepping on is not solid and it's deep to go over your boot. Fortunately, I was able to jump and make it, but tell you what, makes things fun and exciting. Meanwhile, on with the trail. All right, always looking for landmarks. Let's see which one we have here. I believe, ah, Baskin Cemetery. So we'll head out there to see that. I think it's like a tenth of a mile. So let's head on out. 
it is stuff like that that I just came through that makes the trail take so much longer than it should. Oh well. Still on our way to the cemetery. So I better keep going. And there you are. It seems odd in nowadays to see little cemeteries in the middle of nowhere like this, but of course, as you know, back in the day, this wasn't a national park. This is just where you lived, way out in the boonies. Someone passed away. You didn't have the luxury of bringing them into town and to a funeral home and having it in a set location. So you had to make one close to home. We have come to... All right, what is it? Uh, Roaring Fork Road, another 1.3. Okay, great. But here is the spot, another spur that comes off. I don't know if you can see that with the backlighting. But that says uh, Baskin Falls. Trust me, it does. So we are going to head that way, as you know. Probably heard me voice over earlier with the map that I am doing my best to hike all the trails in the Smoky Mountains, referred to as a 900 miler. Even though there's less miles than that in the park, by the time you get all the trails, it ends up being that amount. In any case, in order to do that, you gotta hike them all, every bit of it. So I'm working on doing just that. It means I can't skip any of the side spurs. <laughs> Ah, oh, tempting though that might be when you're tired. Hopefully you can hear me since I'm not using the wireless mic. But we finally arrived at one of the intermediate destinations. Specifically, the Baskin Falls. There is nothing more restful, more peaceful, more restorative than taking a rest break by a beautiful waterfall. Well, I just uh, finished recharging the Osmo here, the Pocket Osmo 3. It was already down to like 65% back there at the cemetery. Uh, so when I got back onto the trail, I put it on charge with the battery. You can see the battery here sticking out of my pack. So I went, what, 10th of a mile or so. Beyond that, went out to Baskin Falls. And I'm just now coming back to the trail. Since I'm not taking my big 35 millimeter camera on these longer hikes, and yes, longer hikes has an asterisk. I'll tell you about that in a moment. I, I'm really having to go light in as many areas as I can for these long distance ones or the equivalent of long distance. For instance, this hike here is only like about 12 miles today. In the summer, packing light, I mean, except for their cameras, I can, that's no problem. I've done 20, 20 plus in a day. I don't like it, but I've done it and can do it. Um, but... When it's winter, you have to pack so much more stuff. You have so much shorter amount of daylight that a 10 or 12 mile is kind of like a 15 miler in the summer, to a degree. So, this counts as a longer-ish hike for me. You might be able to tell by my appearance and my moniker, uh, Greybeard, that not being 18, I am happy to take advantage of different anything that anything going that will help me so it never hurts therefore that's why i'm using the pocket osmo 3 that my phone and that's it i'm not i don't have any other camera with me and that does relieve about five to seven pounds worth of stuff that i would otherwise have to take that's pretty nice 
and the Pocket Osmo does a better video than anything I have. Far better video than anything I have. It's really good. The still images aren't super, super. They're decent. They're nice. Nice enough. But they're not... My phone actually takes a little bit better still images if the conditions are right. So I'll use that for still images for the most part in Pocket Osmo for the video. Okay, well... As I mentioned, we are back here, back onto the trail. I think we have a couple hundred feet here, and we're going to hit Roaring Fork Road. Actually, it's more like 1.3 miles. Crossover onto Grapeyard Ridge. We're going to hit that and go until we run into the, I think it's Big Dudley. That goes over to the concession horse trails. All those that, you know, you see, I'll insert the image here. I'm going to, tomorrow, when I hike out, I'm going to, if I can get a ride back to my car, <laughs> I'm going to zip over and knock out the rest of those concession horse trails. Meanwhile, this is such a beautiful scenery. It's crisp. It's clear. It's vibrant. They've just done with a lot, had a lot of rain recently. So it's just, despite the blowdowns, as you can see, there's a ton of it right here. Oh, it does make things fresh and shiny. It reminds you what a gift our Creator has given us. Just gorgeous. Okay, back in a bit. Well, looks like we've come to another cemetery. This is the one located just before Roaring Fork. Remember, Roaring Fork is a loop. Wow, this is a fairly good size one. I didn't realize it was that extensive. And of course, there's the road down there in the distance. Isn't it nice how the trail gets pretty and graveled just before we get there? Whenever it gets near a road. Look here. Grapeyard Ridge Trail. That's the one we want. Just a mere 7.6 plus an extra mile. But not all of that's going to be done today. even a window. I wonder if that's, I mean, it's probably not original, but I don't get the ripples in the glass. I don't know if you can see that. Not much to it, just a room. It does have a window though, and a fireplace, of course. Whoa, that's going to be great for drying out. And the barn up here. Wow. And with that typical storage up above, yeah. So, sorry, I'm not giving great amounts of coverage to that because I need to get on. Here we go. Yeah. On we go. Wow, yet another 
uh, deadfall that across the trail. It is difficult to describe just what a disheartening thing it is to see that because when I have to go through it like this right here what it takes to get over under around twist turn get limbs off of the backpack and let me slip through I could easily go one to two tenths of a mile on the energy and effort that I have to get just past something that's that entangling Ugh. okay I would like to think that there aren't any more blowdowns it's a nice nice thought but I know it's not true okay on we go nothing like when the trail becomes the river or the stream If you look over my shoulder, you'll notice that it is getting towards sunset. It's about there, in fact. Oh, maybe another 20 minutes or so. But as it's gotten cooler, I've had to zip up my fleece. And I suspect by sundown itself, shortly after, I'm going to have to zip up the north face over shell and put on the socks back on top of my hands again but meanwhile there's some pretty scenery okay this is the type of thing that I've been dealing with about every I don't know, 10 to 50 yards, I go through at least one or a string of two or three of these. Which is why I am doing as much night hiking as I am. It's why I'm still about 1.3 miles from the camp, which means one to one and a half hours away. Oh, okay. You just have to be really careful because you're doing this. Well, at the moment I'm doing one-handed. Okay. Okay. Up, over, thread, push. And this stuff takes all kinds of energy. Oh, stupid. Branch. Okay. Okay. Make it through. We turn on the and then we have we head on down the trail but before you do that stop and check to make sure phone hasn't fallen out of the pocket your hat your extra socks wallet anything valuable from the pack so after you verify that after every one of those then you head on <laughs> gives you something to do Keeps it from being a boring trip, I guess. Unless you find blowdowns. Tedious, I don't know. Nah. I would rather they not be there, but it's not without some redeeming value. All right. This is what I was looking for. This get up close here graveyard ridge campsite 32 that's me 1.7 all right stables yeah deadly horse 2.7 it's only sorry it's only uh, about 0.5 
to where it joins the network of trails. I'm going to do that really quick and come back. I mean, it's dark anyway. May as well get that out of the way so that tomorrow, when I'm trying to fit that in quick as a day hike, that won't take very much time because I can knock off that extra half mile that I have to double out and back. Just do it now. Oh, joy. It takes an astute observer, but if you listen really close, you'll be able to detect a slight drop in my enthusiasm for dealing with blowdowns at this point. Here's another one right across the path. There are quite a few more blowdowns like that on that out and back section of Big Dudley Trail, and I got to do them twice. Believe it or not, I just crossed that. I don't know how well you can see the water. It's going ankle to almost knee deep. All the way across. Okay, time to be going. So on the trail where I can see into the distance. Just look there, you can see the lights of Gatlinburg. Rather reminiscent of my Old Settlers Trail hike. And if we keep on moving over here, just a sliver of the moon, I know you can't see it very well because the thing does not zoom in very well at all. Oh, well. Stuck it on low light mode here, just so you could see the lights of Gatlinburg. That is a cool tree. Look what happens as we go up. Yeah. There we go. That's what we've been looking for. That right up there. Take me just a second to get across the stream here. There we are. Okay. Yes. There we are. This is Grape Yard Ridge Trail. I finally finished my out and back on Big Dudley and am ready to continue eastward to my campsite on Grape Yard Ridge Trail. You can see we left Big Dudley 1.7 to go. Yes. That is welcome news. Yep. There are people you can see. I said there were at least two or three other camps, campers there when I registered. So sure enough. Okay, I'll turn this off for a little bit. I don't like to record people without first talking to them, make sure it's okay. So, after sitting around the campfire for a couple hours with my new friends, I hit the sack to get ready for the next day. Good morning. Oh, it's a little extra seven. Two other guys at the campsite. Real nice people. They had a fire go up at the time I got here, so that was really quite nice. I think it got down to the mid-twenties, maybe. It's a pretty view. These are a couple of really great guys. They had a fire going when I came into camp and they had one going the next morning. What more could you ask for? Well, it's a little after nine and just getting started. I mean, when sunset, sunrise doesn't come till well after seven. And you have to get water, breakfast, all that stuff. And I just really don't like to really rush super fast in the morning. So, took my time. And some really cool guys. Uh, 
as you saw that fire they had that fire going last night and like that and that was so nice to walk into camp and there's a fire already going for you that was pretty cool so we're heading out and gonna be on the lookout for something that I missed the last time I went on the manway so I'm gonna hopefully catch it on the way out here as you can see though they have some more of the stone walls this used to be at one point this campsite 32 I believe this used to be somebody's homestead you can see the wall the stone wall along here very very cool Okay, they mentioned it would be right about in here, and I see the bend they're talking about, so this is where the steam engine is. If you go back to my channel, look at the uh, feature length videos, click on that tab, you'll see about three, three or four hikes ago, I did the Engine Creek Manway. The idea is that it leads up all the way to the Grapeyard Ridge Trail, and then short distance and you see the steam engine back before as a park they you know all of this was just land that people lived on or most of it anyway uh, this one guy had some a steam engine, and he put that on a wagon and he transported it up here and used that steam engine to power various things that people needed done and he tried to take it up this trail and he didn't realize how poorly the edge of the trail was and it tipped over and fell into the creek and it was just it was just way too much to worry about trying to get it out so they just left it there and it's still there and it's just sat there ever since i think this is where it's at this steam traction engine was made by a farming equipment company called nicholas and shepherd in battle creek michigan the steam traction engine was hauled to various locations to power belt-driven machines like sawmills. Considering that it has been around 100 years since this wreck happened, the amount of rust and decay is much less than one might expect. It is always a thrill to come across, to touch, and to see such relics so evocative of life in those more arduous times. Not long after the steam engine, we passed James Gap, and from this point on, I'm reading the map right, it looks like it tends to just taper down and down and down. So the hiking won't be as much effort, and the trail has become nice, wide, and smooth. And for those of you who have hiked in the Smokies, you know so many of the trails are just a web of protruding, twisting, slippery roots, and or softball or larger sized boulders you can slip and turn your ankles on. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the trails. I love being on the trails, I should say. But when you get something that's as wide and smooth and relatively root-free enough anyway, like this, this is this is like a like a Cadillac ride. Just nice and very pleasant. As I've been warming up progressively during the day, I've been shedding layers, so I'm just down to my thermals. And with the sun, the no wind, and the temperature, it, the exercise, it's plenty enough. And now the trail has descended right against the creek. It's so pretty. little thick in that one spot due to the blowdown. We can manage it. What you don't see from this view is that the log I'm on is about three to four feet above the water of the creek. 
and I'm having to find rocks or other spots I can reach with my trekking poles to keep from falling off. Wow, this is like the, I think the sixth water crossing. A couple of them you have to be pretty inventive to keep from getting your feet wet without taking off your boots. Finally, this is what I've been looking for. Another thing I've been looking for. This is the end of the hike. Do you ever feel like that maybe, just maybe, you spoke a little too soon? With blowdowns to the last moment. Yep, that's it. Now you can see why they've closed down the road and why it's not only the end of the hike, it's the beginning of my next hike for three miles out to the main road. Well, yet another reason why they've closed the road. It is so beautiful to have that big rushing creek and those patches of almost emerald green blue. Even more blocking the road. Well, I'm finally at the end of the hike that I had to do after the end of the hike. The surprise three plus miles from the Twin Creek Trailhead to the very entrance to the 321. So, a little extra walking. Fortunately, my sister has agreed to come pick me up and out of the goodness of her heart, and I'll see her in a few moments. Meanwhile, I just wanted to let you know that I really appreciate the chance to bring you my experiences backpacking in the Smokies. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous place. I want to share that. So if you get a chance, if you could click the like button, that helps. If you could share it with others or subscribe, all those things help as you'll hear in just a moment. But either way, I really appreciate your letting me share yet another hike with you. This is Greybeard for the Sylvan Reflections channel. See you on the next one. If you like this video, please consider clicking the like, subscribe, and notification bell.